After countless requests to dive into the operator lore for the Modern Warfare operators from Season 2 and on, here it is. The Coalition, being one part of the coin that is Armistice, is a multinational alliance that consists of operators from Western forces like the SES, Demon Dogs and Warcom. In total, including the Milsim operators, the Coalition contains 26 operators. However, since I already covered the base and season 1 operators, and I'm excluding the Milsim operators, I'm covering the operators that have been added from season 2 up until season 6. Today I dive deep into the lore of 4 operators from season 2 and season 3. Talon, Simon Ghost Riley, Alex and Daniel Ronin Shinoda. Talon, real name unknown, is one of the operators introduced in Season 2 and a Canadian Special Forces operator. He was raised by a blended First Nation family in Ontario, Central Canada. His tattoos, mohawk and face paint can be traced back to his heritage of the native Canadians. His roots return in the names of his weapons like Black Bear, Blood Oath and his dog, Indiana. Talon was recommended to join WARCOM, the global counter-terrorism unit of the coalition, after serving with Sergeant Marcus Griggs in Uzbekistan. He earned a commendation in a daring midnight raid of an al Qatala encampment. Similar to the other operators that have been introduced through the seasons, there isn't a secret operator file. However, in the fifth season, one of his operator missions rewards you with a Shadow Ops calling card, leading me to believe that after the events in Verdansk, he joined up with Shadow Company. Simon Ghost Riley is a British operator for the SES that became quite the staple in the original Modern Warfare series. He lives with a redacted past and an undercover present, marked by a concealed appearance to hide his identity and maintain anonymity in the field. Born in Manchester, Simon Riley joined the Special Air Service and spent the majority of his career serving numerous short-term deployments and executing covert assignments in classified locations. He became an expert in clandestine tradecraft, focused on sabotage, ambushes and infiltrations into denied areas and hazardous environments. Ghost concealed his identity under a hallmark skull figured mask to maintain anonymity in the field. Although unknown when and how, Ghost at some point worked together in the same unit as Maze, an ex-United States Ranger turned gun for hire. After the destruction of Roman Barkov's chlorine gas factory and his respective death in Borjomi, Georgia, another powerful figure rose to take Barkov's place, the CEO of Zakayev Arms and ultranationalist Viktor Zakayev. Captain John Price met with Kate Laswell, the CIA station chief. Expecting an international conflict, Price asked for the operator files to create a task force, the 141. Aside from Captain Price, Sergeant Kyle Gazgarek and John Soap McTavish, the fourth member mentioned was Ghost. Tea? Yeah, well, I'm a long way from a proper pint. Russia disowned Barkov. Well, they didn't have much choice, did they? He's dead. You took a big bite out of that problem, John. For now. We're left unchecked. It won't be. General Shepard pulled the files you asked for. What exactly is this about? A task force. Mm -mm. We already have loose ends. Then I will tie them. I can fund assets, not outlaws. Enjoy the tea, then. Sakaya wants Barkov's throne. I almost buried him in Pripyat with Macmillan. That was the father. This is the son, Victor. Lovely family. They're big fans of Hatir's. Well, that would explain why he's still alive. They're gonna get him out. Then give me what I need. Who's your crew? Sergeant Garrick. Kyle? They call him Gaz. He never said anything. John Octavish, SAS, sniper, demolitions, goes by soap. Why? It's classified. <laughs> there he is. Simon Riley. There's no picture. Never. Now the rest. 
That's neat to know. When else we go to you? What are you calling this task force? One for one. As time passed, Zakaya freed Al-Assad from his imprisonment, who took up the mantle of Omar the Wolf Suleiman and founded Al-Qatala Al-Jadid, or the New Killers. With Zakaya's armaments and Al-Assad's manpower, the pair forged an alliance and launched a full-scale assault against the capital of Kastovia, Verdansk. After the collaboration of coalition and allegiance called Armistice or Arm 4 put a stop to Al-Assad and Zakaya's plans, Al-Assad showed off his true plan as he pulled out his troops and deployed massive chlorine gas clouds that would slowly close in on Verdansk. After being teased with his appearance showing on the Tanto building in Piccadilly Circus, London, and the television screens across the multiplayer maps, Ghost was introduced in Season 2. Similar to the other Arm 4 operators, he was deployed in Verdansk and found a coalition operator shot by one of their own. In order to investigate this new development, he needed trustworthy operators. Target down. Gas is closing in. We need to exfil now. Price. Something's wrong in Verdansk. They're targeting their own. We need to find out why. Send fighters I can trust. Ghost out. Ghost, with assistance from us through the Ghost Season 4 Fractured Intel missions in Warzone, gathered intel relating to the airport detected occurred during al Qatala's invasion of Verdansk. Investigating the first piece of intel at the BCH4 TV station, it shows a text log issuing a state of emergency, advising citizens of Verdansk to leave the city and meet an armed escort at gate B23. Upon searching gate B23 at the airport, another piece of intel shows communications went dark in the air traffic control tower. Following intel suggests loss of contact with the plane over Arklov Peak. Upon reaching the mountain, it appears the plane, with all its passengers aboard, crashed into the mountainside. The flight recorder log found on location backs this up. Pointing to the Arklov Peak military base, it turns out al took control of the base and shot down any leaving planes. Al-Assad and Zakayev's master plan to break the already fragile alliance between Russia and the West was a success, as Arm 4 disbanded and started fighting amongst themselves. After escaping Verdansk, Ghost, getting briefed on the situation by Price, infiltrates the oil yard in Rust, located most likely in Georgia, and as he is ready to take out the Russian guards, he is reinforced by none other than Alex. Although Price must have known Alex didn't lose his life, it seems Ghost was kept in the dark. In Season 6 and the mission intel secret trails that comes with it, Ghost, with the intel from Price, investigates what Zakhaev is moving through the tunnels. The intel suggests the metro system that is taking material underground could have tripped alarms at the Barakat shopping metro. Upon collecting a new lead at Barakat shopping, it seems Zakhaev is moving radiological material to the Verdansk center, the metro stop of the Verdansk stadium. A note confirms the existence of radiological material and redirects to room 301 in the Verdansk hospital. A container containing a piece of paper with a note on it. The code, when applied to the map, refers to H6 on the Verdansk map or Krovnik farmland. One of the farms contains a locked door. Upon entering the code, the door opens and in the hidden room a transcript is found. The transcript reads a conversation between Zakhaev and Perseus 
the Russian spy from Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. The two, although communicating in coded message, are hinting towards a weapon that can be used against the West. Who the snakes are in this coded message is unknown, although possible that Perseus is alive in 2020, it's unknown how exactly Modern Warfare and Cold War will tie together. The key contained in the transcript is able to be used for one of the deposit boxes in the Bank of Verdansk, which holds a photo of a weaponized nuclear bomb in Bunker 11. Something big is about to happen, but details surrounding the story of Warzone and Cold War are for another video. And that's where the ghost story ends. Echo 31, better known under his code name Alex, is, as most of you will know, a former operative for the Special Activities Division or SAD of the CIA. His uniform, however, bears an insignia that resembles Task Force 141, even before it was created. Not much is known about Alex's early life or history other than that he served in the Delta Force before surrendering his former rank and history of Special Ops military service to the SAD in 2013. During the six years after Alex lived a series of assumed identities to achieve sensitive objectives where he was needed, often operating autonomously, training, advising and arming allies to act as interpreters, pathfinders and soldiers. He valued direct contact with local militias where he can track both allied and enemy intentions to help advise appropriate action. His mission profiles include counterinsurgency, special reconnaissance, counterterrorism, information warfare, and anti proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. The tools of his trade were laptops, light machine guns, set phones, and rocket equipped combat drones. He also led small teams trained to infiltrate enemy lines and survive inhospitable conditions in hostile locations. Through 2017, Alex and his team played key roles in ensuring definitive victories against emerging terrorist networks. As the SAD is permitted to execute missions against enemies of the state, without consulting the Pentagon or White House, Alex has been involved in multiple actions to assassinate enemy leadership. Starting October 24, 2019, Alex would start his involvement in the War on Terror against al Qatale and Barkov. On November 3, 2019, alongside the Uzbekistani Liberation Force or ULF, Farah, Price and Garrick, he would assault Barkov's factory and destroy its furnace from the inside. However, as the detonator was destroyed, there was no other option than sacrificing himself by rigging the furnace from the inside. After Farah killed Barkov, she gave the go-ahead sign and Alex detonated the charges and blew up the entire facility, seemingly killing him in the process. Although unknown how Alex managed to survive the explosion, he did not walk away unscathed. He lost his left leg, but that didn't stop him. Replacing it with a prosthetic limb, seemingly the only person knowing he was alive was Price. He was charged with desertion after defying his orders and he remained in hiding for 5 months until Price recalled him to duty in March 2020. He might be classified under the war crime unit, but he is a free agent, untied to any organization. To prevent his arrest, he keeps his identity unknown with the hardwired skin, however when he is among trusted colleagues, as he is when he assists Ghost, he will suit up into something more comfortable. Other than this, his role in the conflict in Verdansk is unknown. Daniel Ronin Shinoda, a Japanese-American citizen, is an ex-Special Forces operator recruited by Warcom and is widely known as the One Man Army. A saboteur and master of multiple fighting systems, proficient in unconventional warfare, foreign internal defense and special reconnaissance, he truly lives up to his name. 
Although he's an American operator, his name, a ronin or a wandering samurai with no lord or master, as well as his Urizumi or Japanese tattoos, referred to his heritage of feudal Japan. Thank you guys very much for watching. The creation of these videos is very time consuming, from writing the script to designing the motion graphics. If you like these type of videos and want to support me in continuing creating, there are several things you can do. Liking or disliking, depending on what you thought of the video, other than views, this shows me how much you like the content I put out. Subscribing reinforces your support and shows me you want more videos. Leaving interactive comments or feedback reminds me how I'm not just doing it for myself, it shows how I can improve. And the last way to support me is to join the channel and become a member for one, five or ten dollars a month. In return you will unlock exclusive rewards such as digital lore items and exclusive posts or perhaps unique ideas you can implement. The more support I gain, the more time and energy I can invest in YouTube and in turn this will result in more frequent uploads and a higher quality content. Whatever you decide to do, I'll be here because I like what I do. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.